Good morning, YouTube. I don't know why I said that in a Boston accent. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm pretty nervous to make this video, but I'm very eager to make it. Today, I will be discussing how my first semester of medical school went for me, the challenges that I faced, the times that I failed, and my advice to anybody who's considering this path and kind of answering the question, is it worth it? A little bit about myself, my name is Tyler. I am a first year here at The Ohio State University College of Medicine, my dream medical school, go Buckeyes, baby. I went to community college my first two years. I worked three jobs, paid my tuition off in full, went to University of Illinois, finished up my degree in neuroscience 2019, took four gap years, applied to medical school three times, didn't get in the first two times and then the third time I was accepted I had a, a really great cycle I ended up with seven acceptances and I chose my number one school the Ohio State University College of Medicine I don't mean to come off as a braggy or anything I'm just saying that I can apply to medical school three times and end up with seven acceptances so can you so believe in yourself chase those dreams and let's get started all right so let me take you back to my first semester of medical school I moved to Ohio not knowing a single person never stepping foot in the state and I I was pretty overwhelmed when I came here. I'm not gonna lie, uh, I would say the first two weeks of medical school were probably my loneliest. Uh, I remember at night praying like, please God, can you put good friends in my life to help me get through the these hard times? The amazing friends just kept entering my life. Another one, another one, another one, another one. I, I'm very thankful these amazing friends kept entering my life and helping me get through that hard time of just feeling so lonely and making Ohio a home for me. First block of medical school was pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't in school for four years, so I was a very rusty student. It was hard, but I really enjoyed the content that we were learning. I loved the fact that I'm in medical school. After so long, it finally worked out. I'm, I'm here, I'm a student, I'm a med student. And so my first quiz ever was actually the first thing that I ever failed in medical school. So it was only 10 questions, thankfully. I went in and I got demolished. 70% is passing and I, I was not close to that. <laughs> Definitely a wake up call for me that, yo, what I'm doing is not right. I need to reevaluate my study methods. So I actually reached out and I went to one of our learning specialists and I was like, hey, can you help me find a way that works for me when studying and preparing for assessments? Because obviously what I'm doing is not working for me. I reached out and I was placed in a weekly tutoring group and I'm two tutors myself and other peers and that has been so beneficial and I'm thankful that I was very proactive it definitely taught me some strategies to help me prepare for quizzes exams it changed the momentum of medical school because I got that failing quiz score and I'm just like, oh, using those techniques, the strategies shared in the, the tutoring sessions, it, it helped me become a better student. The final exam was approaching and I was feeling more and more anxious about it. I took a practice exam the night before my final exam for that first block and I ended up scoring like a 40%. <laughs> and the 70% is passing for medical school here. I was just devastated. I stayed up that entire night so worried, so stressed out. I'm not gonna pass, I'm not gonna pass. Just completely worried about that. I went to take the exam on zero hours of sleep, was so scared I didn't pass. After that, it was Tuesday, so of course, gonna hit up Top Golf, 50% off. Went with some of my friends and some classmates. The scores dropped while we were, <laughs> we were golfing. I just remember everyone opening the scores like, oh, I got like a 97, I got like a 98, and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, ooh. So I went upstairs in the bathroom by myself, like I'm on the stall bathroom floor opening typing in my password and stuff for the grades, and I, I found out I, I passed, thankfully. Fast forward to Foundations 2, which was the hardest block by far of medical school. This one was difficult. Some upperclassmen who are just like, yo, prepare yourself for Foundations 2 because this is going to be brutal. It was challenging for everybody, so I know I was not the only one going through that at that time. After taking that final exam, I knew it was gonna be rough, I knew it was gonna be bad, and thankfully I, I did pass, and Foundations 2 was behind me. Third block of medical school was MSK, our first actual organ system block, which I was really excited about. Upperclassmen medical students tell me like, oh, this is an, an easier block compared to F2. You've made it, you passed F2, so you can kind of relax and chill. You don't have to study as hard, so. For me, when I got that advice, you wanna know what I did? I relaxed, I chilled, and I didn't study as hard my biggest regret. I do not want to paint myself as a victim whatsoever. I, I don't want to frame this video in a negative light. I'm so thankful for being a student here. Every day I wake up, I'm chasing my dreams. I just feel like on social media, a lot about medical schools embellished or over glamorized. And I want to share my true authentic experience. I'm just sharing what I went through during MSK 
And <laughs> let's get started with that. So MSK has been the best block and I, I love the content. I love professors who taught it. The block leader is phenomenal. Dissection was so cool. It was just a good experience overall. I'm very fortunate and blessed to be in this position because not many people can say they've had an opportunity to do a cadaver dissection. And being able to see the muscles, see the anatomy in person is just an experience like no other. I definitely think MSK really kind of pivoted me down to pursue a surgical specialty, kind of planted that seed because I just love anatomy. I love MSK so much. Let's get into it. All right, the first, I want to say first four weeks of MSK, phenomenal, like the best time of my life. I'm just living a dream medical student life. Everything's smooth sailing. I'm loving life. Then it is the last two weeks. So we have a practical and then a written final and oh baby. I knew it was gonna go bad when I put on my sweater and then I put on my crucifix. So the cross that I've had, I've worn every single day for years. I put that on and the class was kind of weird. I'm like, okay, whatever. I come home, the cross is gone. The necklace is gone. And I'm like, it's about to go down these, these next two weeks. That, that was the sign where I knew it was gonna go down and it did. I just wanna say this time in my life was my lowest point in medical school, really setting the stage where I'm out of money completely. Every credit card I have is maxed. My Discover is maxed, my Target Red Card is maxed, my Chase Freedom is maxed. I have a Bank of America account with loan money that is overdrawn by like $5 and then I get hit with a late fee, it's like negative $40. My Chase account had like 225 in it. I'm just scraping by. I'm out of money at this point. I have like 10 miles in my car. It's freezing outside, no gas. It's so bad to have no gas in your car. And I'm just like, I am barely holding it together. And I know that rent is due and I'm I'm trying to make it happen. I'm going to credit union. I'm like, please give me a loan. Like I just need this this amount of money so I can pay my bills and, and get, get on with it. And they're like, sorry, you don't work. We can't do that. I, I applied for Discover Loans. They said, no, I'm hardly holding it together. I know rents do. I know all my bills are coming up. That is kind of like setting the stage for what I'm going through at that time. And I had no money for food whatsoever. I was eating Cheerios and water every single day for two weeks straight. I just didn't have food. And the only time I was able to kind of splurge was get coffee. And that was Tim Hortons. I had my, my, a point. So I would just get my free coffee every day and I'm barely holding it together at this point. We have our practical as soon as I walked in that anatomy lab. So it, it's different donors, the structures are tagged and you have to go in. It was not a good time for me. Oof, it was rough. It was so rough. And I walked out, I felt defeated. I And I was very overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, I need to do very well on this written final or else I'm just not gonna pass the block. Fast forward a couple days, we have our OSCE, our formative OSCE. So they grade us on, there's three OSCE assessments. There's one in knee assessment, there's a history taking and a shoulder evaluation OSCE. And I remember the morning of the OSCE, I wake up and there's an eviction notice on my door. And it was the meanest letter ever. It was. Rent was, rent was late by one day, mind you. It was literally one day late. It's like not even serious at that point. And I, I, there's an eviction letter and it was so mean. It's just like, you need to pack up your bags and be out by next week. I didn't have money to pay the rent. Like I, I'm running on fumes. Like I don't even have money to buy food at this point. That really, that was my morning. I, I woke up to an eviction notice. So going into the OSCE, I had the knee, a knee evaluation first. So it's a standardized patient. They know all the, the drills, the procedure. We even had a sheet telling us like, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. As soon as I walk in that room, my mind is blank. My mind is an analog TV that shuts off and it's just like, Phew. I had the sheet in my hand telling me exactly what to do. So I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to just get through it. I'm holding myself together, like push it, like get through it, get through it. I, I did the examination and my person, my standardized patient was like, okay, we're gonna start with what you did good. And he's like, so you, you palpated the spots on one knee. You're supposed to do both knees. <laughs> and you, you miss this, 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 and I'm just standing there. He's like, so we're gonna go over what you did wrong. And it was just, it was this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. So what I did right was I, I examined one knee correctly, was supposed to do both, but I didn't even do that correctly. And that ended the, what I did right. And the next five minutes were just going over what I did wrong and why I was so bad at it. Mind you, I had the worst morning, just like with the eviction notice, just like I'm, I'm, st I'm standing there and I'm trying to just hold it together and I, 
it takes a lot for me to cry and I have very dry eyes so tears don't flow readily. I just fast blink and that entire time I'm fast blinking. And he's like, oh, after he went through it, I had to redo it to remediate it because I failed that part. And he's just like, oh, do you have any questions? I'm like, how was this graded? And thankfully it was pass fail and they grade us on the, the remediation portion of it. So thankfully he showed me how to do it, assess it, and I was able to get through it. And then after that, I had the, the history taking one, which, I hit a grand slam, like that was such a good Oski. And I'm still thinking of the knee Oski. I, at this point, I didn't know if I passed or failed because even though I did remediate it, I didn't know if I failed it and had to come back again. But I for sure failed the first part of the knee portion before I re remediated it. I would have got a 15%, I'm not even kidding. The history taking went phenomenal and the shoulder evaluation went so good. And she was hyping me up. She's like, you did everything you hit. You were so spot on. I don't know why she said this, but she's like, you're gonna be such an amazing physician. Like your tone was so gentle, I felt safe. And at this point, I'm just like, wow. Like I needed to leave that room because I felt like I actually was gonna cry. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> now that I got the Oscars out of the way, it was the written final portion. Get to the final exam, the still rent is not paid. I just decided to put my tail down, put my head down and just be like, Yo, little brother, can you help me pay my rent? Like, I, I have no other options. I will be evicted. And I don't come from money. My family doesn't have wads of cash. I didn't ask my parents because we we just wouldn't have the funds. So I'm like, I will be evicted. And I was fine. Like, I've ex I went through the five stages of grief about eviction. I'm like, you know what? I could just live in my car. I could shower in the gym. It's not that big of a deal. Like, after when school's done, I can just live at home for a break and then just find a, a cheap place to live. But then I'm like, yo, I have a roommate who paid rent and that's totally not fair for him. So I'm like, I need to actually get this sorted out. My little brother, who's a school teacher, ended up using his credit card to pay my rent and I will pay him back when the spring semester loans disperse and I will be working and finding a way to make this work. I'm, I've never been a quitter, but anyway, so it is four days before the exam, the written exam, and I am going through the PowerPoints. I'm studying 16 hours a day. I'm just putting my all into it. I'm so burnt out. I'm, mal I'm malnourished. I've literally just been snacking on Cheerios and water and like maybe some trail mix that I have that's like a couple months old. Like I didn't have anything. I've always been in that, that mindset where I've been told like this is you're dreaming too big, this will never work out, and I somehow make it work. And I just wanna say, those two weeks where I literally had no food, I don't know how I pulled it off, but looking back, I did pull it off. Oh, actually, there was one time where, I don't know what it was, but my buddy, who I haven't talked to in a couple months, he he just texted me, he's like, hey, hope med school's going well, and then he sent me $20 on Apple Cash. Completely unwarranted, just an angel. And I'm like, thankfully it's Apple Cash because my Chase is negative like $80. My Bank of America is negative like $60. If you would have sent out either of them, it just would have went to their fees. So I'm like, Apple Cash, I went and got Chipotle, had the best burrito bowl of my life. Like that was 10 out of 10. And thank you for that, homie. You know exactly who you are. I don't, I don't want anything. I'm not accepting any like, but that was just God sent. That was an angel there. Fast forward four days later, I'm taking the written exam. I actually got sleep before the exam. I never sleep before my exams. The MSK final exam was the first time I ever had sleep since the MCAT. I took the MCAT on zero hours of sleep, my last MCAT attempt. I took foundations one final zero hours of sleep. I took foundations two final zero hours of sleep. And I took that third MSK final, I, I finally was rested. And I woke up and I was so sick. It was just my body, I was drained. I woke up, my eye, this eye was neon red. Like if you go to Google, go to google.com and type in red and look at images. My eye was that color. There was no white whatsoever. I'm numb. I'm so just burnt out. I walk in to take the test and I'm just demolished. It feels like I got hit by a school bus. The school bus drove away and then backed up and ran me over again. Minus, I have one eye that I can see. The, this eye's like blurry. There was no crust or anything. I knew it wasn't pink eye, it was something funky. I took that exam and it was rough. It was, I was so convinced I failed. Like I hit my family group chat and I was just like, I'm gonna have to stay over break. I can't come home because I will be studying for this. Completely convinced I failed that exam. I was so convinced. I'm like, I'm staying home. I'm so sick. I don't wanna get anybody sick. I failed this exam. I'm going to have to restudy for it. That was the hardest exam I've ever taken. A hundred questions. I went home and I was just feeling so defeated after that exam. Fell asleep, passed out, and I didn't leave my bed until the exam score came out. I was in my bed so sick, sick as a dog. No money, nothing. Like, just 
so sick. And I was waiting for that exam score to drop. I'm like, it, it's coming out today. Like, I'll know if I failed or if I passed. And I was praying. I was like, please, God, like, let me pass this exam. Please, please, please. I will change my methods. I will change my study approach to this. I will never be in this position again. Thank the Lord I passed that exam. And I was able to go home and spend a little time with my family. The one Bible verse I love is just like, the pain that you're experiencing now will not come close to the joy that you're about to experience. And that's, that's definitely what got me through it. I definitely appreciate the adversity that I faced throughout this entire journey of becoming a physician and you're probably wondering if I think it's worth it at the end of the day I wake up and I chase these dreams this dream is so worth it to me there's not one thing that I would I would rather be doing in life at all I know that I chose this path I'm able to get through these hard times I'm able to get through these failures I'm able to get through the times where I've had had nothing because it will make me appreciate the times where I do have a little bit of money in my account or I do pass the exam with flying colors. I'm so thankful for the individuals who I've met along the way. The amount of growth, personal growth that I've gone through these past six months is unreal. It's truly unreal. I've grown so much as a person and I'm just so incredibly thankful to be in this spot. There's not one other thing I would rather be doing in life. I wake up every day I chase these dreams. Every single day I wake up feeling blessed, fortunate that I'm in this position and I would not be doing anything else. So if you're going through it, if you're considering if medicine's for you or not, go for it. For me, my soul is on fire and this is what I was put on this planet to do, was to pursue medicine. I am so thankful, so blessed. I shared my hard times because those, those last two weeks of MSK, I wanna say were the hardest days of my life. And I got through them, it gave me a whole different perspective on so many aspects of life. I'm fortunate, I'm blessed. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have made it this far, I really appreciate your time. Your support means the world to me. We're almost at 1000 subscribers. If you push that subscribe button, truly would make my entire day. I appreciate you for watching and thank you so much. Stay tuned for the next one.